The first known Goodfellas in North America started in Chicago in 1909. The Chicago Tribune newspaper appealed to their, to their readers that there was a need in their community, there were a lot of people uh, going hungry at Christmas, they had no toys, maybe, maybe there were clothing issues, footwear. So the Chicago Tribune started a program where they encouraged their subscribers, their readers, to write into the Tribune and sponsor families. So they would collect a list of, of families that were in need and they would match them up to, to the readers. So a subscriber would say, I could take on 10 people or two people or one. The Tribune would mail them names of, of the people that were in need in their area. So if it was me, I would get the need, the, the name of a person in need or a family. I would go out and purchase clothing, food, toys, whatever I felt was, was good for the family at Christmas time. And I would personally deliver to that family's uh, own home at Christmas. So the Chicago Tribune realized in 1909 how incredibly successful the program was. So they issued a challenge to newspapers across North America. They sent it to, uh, to all over Canada, all over the U.S. It actually made its way eventually to the Philippines, to Australia, to Europe. And what they did was they challenged other newspapers to have the same type of program in their areas. So that's where the Windsor Star or its forebears at the time was the Evening Record newspaper. So the Evening Record newspaper, they had an advertising editor by the name of Ernest Craig. He said, well, it's a great idea, let's try it here. A Windsor Goodfellows Club, uh, they've been a, a huge part of our community for over 110 years, I believe, supported entirely through very generous donations, no government grants, it's all volunteer, it's all passion fueled. The Windsor Goodfellows provides thousands of families with assistance throughout the year, including a year-round food bank, uh, school programs, uh, all kinds of amazing things. You're not just a Christmas charity, you are year-round. Do you think a lot of people have that perception? A lot of people in Windsor only think that we operate a Christmas world open every Tuesday and every Friday. Hi, I'm Art Reed and I'm uh, the president of the Goodfellows and we are supplying as much as we possibly can to the poor and the needy of this great city of ours. The increase in the amount of boxes and food that was given out was crazy. We're probably averaging 10 to 15 new families every Tuesday, every Friday. This is my image of Goodfellows. To me, it's not Christmas until I see Goodfellows out in the streets selling those papers. Every November, the Winter Goodfellows and hundreds of volunteers fan out across the city. In over three days, they stand at major intersections and sell special editions of the Winter Star. The money they collect is used for food and clothing programs for those in need. And last year, the newspaper drive raised $380,000, about a third of the Goodfellows annual budget. But this year, COVID-19 is threatening the newspaper drive. Art Reed is the president of the Winter Goodfellows and he joins us now. We're only a month away from when your newspaper drive traditionally happens. What is the latest? Well, to be honest, Tony, we're in the middle of a uh, pandemic and we're gonna have a meeting now in the next few days and make the final decision. If you don't do it, you could potentially lose close to $400,000. How could yeah. you possibly replace that? To be honest about it, well, we can't. Well, I took over in, uh, in January uh, as president and everything seemed to be going well. And, uh, and then the COVID hit us. Well, we better look at our newspaper drive because if this keeps up, we're going to be in trouble. All right, try that. It's coming out there now, Brian. Before we would pass in our newspaper through the window in a car and they would pass the money out to you. But that then we realized that we, sh we couldn't do that because number one, you're too close. Number two, you were actually touching, interacting with people. And who's to say that the person who was giving you a contribution was wearing a mask? So we said, no, we're not going to do it. So a 106-year-old paper drive that, that came through World War I, the Spanish flu, World War II, the Depression, the uh, 
polio outbreaks of the late 40s and early 50s. We worked all through that. And that's it. We're going to have a meeting in about 10 minutes, guys. We had three choices. Do the paper drive as usual, do a modified paper drive, or cancel the paper drive. The paper drive usually brings in about 43% of our budget. If we don't reach the goals that we're, 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 we've been looking for in the past few years, and now even more this year, the only thing we can do is cut something out. And that'll break our hearts. What does it mean to be a good fellow? It's not what you do for yourself every day, it's what did you do to help somebody else? That's what it means to be a good fellow. I'm laying at the World War I monument for Remembrance Day. I've been doing it here since I retired in 2009. Before that, I wasn't able to do it because I was working. Now, being retired, I can take the time to do it. My family, my, my wife's family, they've been in, involved in wars. Parents, grandparents, uncles. I was not in the military other than cadets in high school. And uh, it's just the right thing to do on Remembrance Day. We emigrated to Canada when I was two years old. I was born in Edinburgh, Scotland. Our first year here, we arrived in October of 1948. But that first uh, fall, arriving in October, just with the, the money they had and the belongings we had, my father was looking for work. Someone put our name in for a, a good fellow basket. They came in baskets at that time. My mother said the man came up on the porch, knocked on the door. This is a, a flat that my parents rented. He said, here's your basket. My mother, in her Scottish accent, oh, no, we didn't order that. We can't afford that. And he said, someone put your name in for it. Is that how I, why I stayed involved? I don't know. It probably has a, a lot to do with it. Uh, the rest with being involved in the, in, in the paper driving and the good fellows in general is just the people here. They, uh, there are no egos. It's you're here to help people who are less fortunate. What do you say? What do you say? Oh, girl. I've been a good fellow in Windsor for 20 years. I've been helping out for 20 years. Growing up, I didn't have much of a childhood in the first place. We had a lot of family issues. Just finished high school, and my grandfather set money aside in his will for me to go, so I did. Couldn't get a job afterwards because nobody wanted to hire straight out of college didn't have the experience. So I bounced around from place to place and we finally got enough together to, you know, get a place and we just didn't have any groceries. So lady that I knew, her and her friend took us out to the grocery store and bought us a whole bunch of groceries. And the only thing that she asked in return is that pay it forward. So when COVID first hit in 2020 and a lot of places were shut down, we didn't know if the Goodfellas paper drive was going to happen. Who knows with COVID how things are gonna change? You know, when paper drive was a big thing, you know, every year, you know, you expect it every year, you know, for Christmas, you know, to see the good fellows out there selling their papers. You know, if they're not gonna be there, then what?
That's a good job, guys. It's teamwork. That's what we do here. Uh, I'll tip about three or four percent to the left. But you ca that, I'm going to tip you eight percent to the right. <laughs> <laughs> it is too low. I just put a sign up saying six feet distance. Now just imagine getting a ticket for $750. Yeah, yeah. Ah, that's something. Immediately today, Brian has put signs up about six feet apart and all this sort of stuff, and we have to abide by it. The better chance we have of not contracting the illness. So, for your benefit, I'm going to let Brenda have a few words now in regards to what she sees as what we should be doing, re the regulations and stuff to keep us safe. But with that said, uh, take over. Brenda, please. I just wanted to follow up on uh, the Department of Health that were here a couple of weeks ago. The only areas that she was more concerned about was that small office area where we have, you know, concentration of people in one area, again with, uh, you know, with the virus being uh, airborne, being in the closed space for long periods of time is the highest risk. So in March of 2020, when the pandemic began, the first thing that the province did was to close all businesses, except for essential businesses. So we thought to ourselves, where do we fit? So we reached out to our contact at the Department of Health and they suggested that we be categorized under grocery stores. So that gave us two great options. First of all, we could stay open. Secondly, we could have more on site. At the time, five was max indoors. So we were able to increase the amount of volunteers. Should there have been a breakout and anybody within the 13 volunteers who had COVID, we would have to shut down. So it's really critical that we keep each other safe. First of all, our family safe. And above all, is we wanna keep this place open. Okay with that? Good. And I know you're all looking for raises, and I'm going to put a word in for you at the next board meeting to uh, in double your double your salaries uh, at the next board meeting. What's two times zero? Two times zero is still two times zero. Zero zero. Oh, no, we got all the excess craft dinner. <laughs> okay, guys, let's go to work. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. that um, like influences everything to me. Like I grew up, I'm the youngest of four boys. I, I grew up with, you know, a, mo a mother and father that my dad worked two, three jobs and we had a family owned gas station and he was the mechanic and he was out towing cars and but with all that, he still had somebody's car at the house and he was, you know, doing something and helping somebody who couldn't afford to bring it to the garage. And just seeing him as busy as he was, but always time to help somebody else. And even with my mom, she was volunteering with hospice. And you see what the, the result is for them doing the good and how happy the people are that they're helping. And it's like, how do you not do that? It's one of those things that once you do it and you get that feeling of like, I, I made a difference it becomes like, you know what, like, what's stopping us from doing more? It's infectious. And that's the way we raised our kids too. I've been on the fire department now for 14 years, and I've been involved with Goodfellows probably for, since before that. And my daughters are 16 and 19, and they, uh, you know, they're, they're coming out of high school graduating with 400 volunteer hours. And you know, one little thing that I can think of off the top of my head is, my daughter was 10 years old and she was able to babysit for the neighbor across the street for an hour. At the time, Tecumseh Fire was hosting the Terry Fox run and I had the bright idea that we would run the 5K in, a, in full firefighter gear on air. So my daughter came home from babysitting for the very first time and uh, she says, Dad, where's your pledge sheet? She goes, I made $10, I want to pledge you for your, uh, for your run. And I was like, well, no, honey, I said, you just made that. She goes, no, that's what I want to do. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> So it's kind of one of those things you're like, if you don't think they're watching, you know, they are. It's so easy to just say, I'm busy. You know what I mean? Because it, it's called volunteering because, you know, you're not getting paid for it. It's, it's your own time. You know, if everybody just said, I'm busy, it would be, it'd be a sad place because there'd be a lot of people going without.
there's a, usually a lot of stuff right here in this area because a lot of people sleep here. And sometimes they'll come over and get a, what we call a street bag, which contains uh, a quart of milk, fresh fruit, bread, jam, peanut butter, enough for a good, a good snack, sometimes even a meal. And quite often then they come over here and sit down and have their, uh, have their meal. And then I try to clean it up the next morning. And this doesn't bother me at all. It makes me feel good to be able to do it. You know, I'm from Newfoundland and, and uh, from a place called Carbonier, a small little community, 5,000 population. And when I was brought up, uh, we, we always looked after our neighbors. And My dad was a sailor. Every now and then uh, he'd come home before Christmas and he'd bring home a barrel of apples. A barrel, great big wooden barrel, right full of apples. And of course, all the while we had the apples, I used to have a bunch of my friends, my buddies, would come every morning to walk to school with me so they could get an apple. <laughs> so that's, that's the way we knew the landers were. So it doesn't, uh, you know, it comes natural to do it here and we shared everything we had with each other. I think that's it. To set the record straight for the history of the Windsor Goodfellows and the, and the old newsboys paper drive, Leo Page started selling the newspapers here in Windsor in 1914. He was the one that proposed it to the Evening Record. Now Leo Page, when he was a, a, young, uh, a young lad, himself sold newspapers, so he got together a group of former newspaper uh, sellers and sold newspapers on the corner in the factories here in Windsor. 100% of the funds they raised went directly to the Goodfellows here in Windsor. So Leo Page, through the years, it got muddled and he was thought to be the founder of the Goodfellows because he actually was the founder of the old Newsboys. But the credit for founding the Windsor Goodfellows Club, based on the Chicago Tribune model, goes to Ernest Craig and Mary Boomer, Minnie Boomer. And Mary Amelia Sophia Minnie Boomer was born in 1847 in Galton, Ontario. She moved to Windsor when she married a Windsor banker and businessman named William Merritt Boomer at All Saints Anglican Church here in Windsor. The two of them combined were, were very involved in their church and their community. Unfortunately, um, Mr. Boomer died in 1902, leaving Minnie on her own. She, she never remarried, they didn't have children, but Minnie got herself involved in many aspects of, the, of things going on in the community. She was very, very heavily involved in the Anglican Church. She led the choir, uh, she taught music lessons. She was executive director, or what we would term today as executive director of the Home of the Friendless on Wyandotte Street. Any social function, any fundraising, anything happening in the city, and you needed somebody with organizational skills who would get things done, you called on Minnie Boomer. Example of her prominence, when they formed the first actual Goodfellows Committee, or Board of Directors you call it today, there were a dozen men and one woman, Minnie Boomer. She was the only one that was given the title of executive member. She held a pretty heavy status. Now, when she died in, I, I believe it's 1926, again, to show her prominence in the community, her funeral was, was given a police escort from downtown Windsor at the funeral home, all the way to the funeral home, the cemetery rather, by the Ambassador Bridge. She was given a police escort, her, her funeral cortege, the entire way, which is which in, in the time of the day was unheard of. You had to be a very prominent politician in the city or, or, or somebody else. So she was just a mover and shaker in the city. Well, we sat at a meeting and we, uh, we looked at the possibilities of all the protection with, that our volunteers would need to have with masks and gloves. So this year what we're doing is we've asked the, uh, the, the, the city, we're putting our uh, papers in a box and uh, on a table, either in front of a store or a business or, or inside, 
based on what the business wants. And if you want to contribute, you put your money in the box and you take a paper if you want to take a paper. Our people, our volunteers who would normally be out in the street now or will be inside these stores or outside the stores, just there for assistance and nothing else. I'm just trying to picture this mechanically how this all works. So a box will be sitting at the bank. It's a box sitting at the bank with newspapers in it. Is that right? Next, next to it. Next. And then next to it will be a box to put the money in. Is that correct? How's that? This box is only holding money, right? Now you've got your papers next to it and you've got your table. What right. and they're, hopefully the ad. Yes, and the ad. Yeah. In the internal sites, in the external sites, if they're going to be outside, they can just put it under the box just for extra information should they need it. I think we should clarify that we're not going to be inside any places. Like no, we can't clarify we can't. that. This was not said when these lists were made up. Yeah, if at all right. possible, we're outside. Especially with the new restrictions on COVID, we should not be going into these buildings for four hours. It's, it's too, too late, late to be changing that now. These teams have been have spoken to the sites. The people will be inside. And they're also wearing full PPE. You know, yeah. where they're we wearing full PPE. At the tables and the we've lost a lot of volunteers of people that are vulnerable. When we had 65 sites last Thursday, Bruce and I whittled that down to 45, 43. So we lost, we've lost a ton of volunteers for people. Yeah, so and these are people that will come back right. next year, let's say, right. vaccine is, is out, treatments are out. They'll be out, back out because they enjoy it. They're getting family pressure and saying that, no, you're 68 years old. You're not going to stand in the public for four hours. And I can accept that. I can't blame that. Can I be a Debbie Downer for a second? Okay, so we just went to Orange here, or whatever it is. Does that mean anything to us? If the province says, okay, the whole province is shut down, get a hold of the media, let them know what's happened to us. Our paper drive is down. I hope we don't have to cancel some programs. Every year at this community, we do one big fundraising push, and this is it. It's two vacation days that I use for the whole year. When you go deliver 90 Christmas dinners with bags of toys for their whole family to the house, to your neighbors, to parents I see at the, my kids' schools, stuff like that, it's like, it's worth two vacation days. You know what I mean? If, I, if everybody just said, oh, I have to work, well, guess what? These people go without a Christmas dinner and their kids go without Christmas. Sometimes we gotta make a little bit of sacrifice, right, so. I don't know where my sunshine is today. I think the weatherman lied again. We have noticed over the years that when the weather is kinda crappy, cold and snowy, wet, people usually give more because they feel bad for people on the corners. <laughs> Yes, things are a little bit different this year, but we're managing. People still give, you know, some people actually come to different locations and drop off a check. They can use the website this year. Um, they can text to a number and still give that way. Now this money that, you know, comes in through the paper drive, you know, not only helps out with the Christmas baskets that the Goodfellows give out, but it also helps with, you know, the food bank, the pancake breakfast they do in the schools, the boot and shoe program all year. Um, I mean, the Goodfellows does a lot of good, you know, for the community itself. And it's, it's all volunteers. And that's, that's what, you know, gets me more, is people aren't getting paid to do this. It's, this is, you know, they're doing this out of the good of their hearts. Is anybody standing on the street or is no. everybody? Okay. No, that's the one thing that they said, they, like they just decided they can't, they can't do it this year. It's yeah. just too much risk especially with the way things are heading right now. It's not getting any better for sure. Well, I was on my like dad's corner last year and like it was crazy. People were handing like a hundred dollar bills and stuff. Isn't like, it crazy? It was, yeah, it was awesome. It's very, like until you've actually experienced it, like stood out on the corner and, and you know what's funny is, and, and I don't know why, it's maybe the people have been there before, but it's the people driving the oldest, yeah. junkiest yeah. cars that hand you a hundred dollar bill. Yeah. And it's for sure that either they've been there and they needed the service or something, but. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, perfect. It's, it's 
I was sitting up at the east end and trying to get here. Well, we got caught up. One of the fellas uh, had his license plate stolen uh, out in Colchester, and another guy had to go out there and get him oh, and bring him in. So we, we were filling in for them while. Oh, I see. So we got behind. Eh? Oh, I stole okay. his license plate. Yeah, stole his license plate. That's incredible. Oh, I've got all Christmas on. spirit. Yeah, yeah right. really. Ho, ho, ho. It took a little while, you know, to get coordinated, but uh, basically. People have been very generous. Hey, good, Bruce? good. Yeah. So far. Get your good fellow paper. Or not. I guess you gotta have a sense of humor, eh? Oh, you might as well, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Right on, there you go. Thank you, thank you. There we go. Someone bought us coffee, Timbits. We're gonna oh, be yeah. rolling out of here. Oh yeah. We just need a portage on apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a good location for you guys? This is great. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Love it. I mean he's a loser, but other than that. <laughs> <laughs> this you know. guy's got stuff. Woo woo! Thank you very much, sir. You got, you got stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you got stuff. <laughs> So how's things going so far? Good? It's slow. It's slow, yeah. yeah. We found out two weeks ago, you know, that we, that all of a sudden there's no paper sales and then come up with an idea of trying to, you know, like get people set up at stores and at least it's something. It's it's going to be tough. Okay, thanks guys. Appreciate it. Eh? Thank you. I would probably have 30 people out on the street corners right now at all the major intersections at all the drive-throughs, uh, the Tim Hortons drive-throughs in town, um, I would have people all over the place. And, and it's, when they're right in the line of traffic, it's just like car after car, everybody wants to have that paper in their window, right? Like it's like, so you know everybody that's gonna be driving by it. Until there's a paper on everybody's dash, you're gonna get a donation. So like, that's hard to replace that kind of volume. Have you done this before? No. Okay, yeah, just kind of hold paper up and let them know. If they don't have cash, they can donate this way as well. QR codes there if they want to scan the QR code, or they can text either way. Why well, volunteer? It makes me feel good to help somebody else out. And that's the biggest thing. You know, there are a lot of people in need out there, not just homeless people or, you know, single moms or families that can't find a job or because of this COVID stuff going on right now and people can't work. People are losing their jobs. It's, yeah. Those of us that are fortunate enough to be able to help out, then that's what I, that's what I like. Sorry. It's Saturday, November 28th, 2020, and it's uh, the last day of our annual paper drive. Well, compared to last year, last year was a record year. We're not going to get that this year, and uh, we'll have to wait and see for the final total, but if we're down, we'll have to obviously look at some of the programs. We may have to cut back a little bit here and there, but I think what's important is that 
regardless of good times or bad times, the area has always supported the Goodfellows. Uh, this is the 106th paper drive. We've had it every year despite wars, uh, Spanish flu, polio epidemics. We've had the paper drive and this is the pandemic year. People have been locked down for part of the year and it looks like we're going back that way now. And people are still supporting, still have money coming in. And that's the way Windsor, LaSalle, Tecumseh, St. Clair Beach, that's the way these areas always are. So you said there's 15? There should be 15. There should be. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 on top. One, two. So I retired three years ago in 2019. And at the time I knew I wanted to do something. I wanted to get involved, uh, just uh, some charity work. And the Windsor Goodfellows has always been near and dear to my heart. I've, I've volunteered for uh, probably over 20 years uh, doing the street corners, uh, selling the, the, the papers uh, at Christmas time. It was an easy decision for me to, to come to the Windsor Goodfellows and, and uh, become a part of it. We wouldn't be able to do what we do if it wasn't for the uh, generosity of the people of the city of Windsor. Because of uh, the city with, with, the, with COVID and all the people that are out of work and um, our demand has gone up probably 25 to 30 percent. 756, right there. Hi, how are you? I'm okay. Good. So I can only, I'm not allowed to come in, and then this is your voucher. Okay. Okay. Very good. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye now. Normally, we would carry it in, put it on the counter for them. I've even gone in and put stuff in the refrigerator for them before. With COVID, we can't do that. It, uh, it certainly does open your eyes. Once my grandchildren are old enough, I want to bring them down and, and have them see what goes on and, and what we do. I mean, I want to be able to bring them down and show them what, what a lot of families have to go through. It's, it's so difficult for so many families, especially now, more than ever, but uh, I mean, my grandchildren are very fortunate, and they, you know, their their parents have good-paying jobs, and they've never had to worry about uh, where the next meal is going to come from. I'd like them to, to to just see how a lot of people have to to try and manage throughout the year. Good morning. How are you? Good. So this is your voucher for either Metro or Food Basics? And this is for you guys, there's not much. Oh, no, 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 no. This is all yours. There is, there's $10, that's what. Well, we'll, for you guys or whatever. No, we'll put it in the donation and that'll help pay for, that's beautiful. Thank you, have a very Merry Christmas. Thank you.
Wow, eh? That's amazing. Yep. Even though there are people in need, I'll she, just leave that there till we get back. She donated for us. Yeah, she made a, a ten dollar donation to the Goodfellows. That's that's crazy. You know, it surprises me, but it doesn't. Um, like I said, the, the people in the city of Windsor, I mean, even people who are down on their luck, they still, they do whatever they can, you know, like people who are going through such a difficult time um, and still manage to scrape together a few dollars to donate back to us so that we can help somebody else, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's crazy that, uh, uh, that people do that. Uh, it, it's, it's unbelievable. Okay, before we close, I want to make one final comment, if you don't mind, I'll tell you a little story. One of the guys, well, a couple, one does it in the morning and one does it in the afternoon, and they're the ones that pass out the boxes through the, we call it wickets back home, they push the boxes out to, for the clients. Well, this poor son of a gun came along one day and looked in through the door, and Dan was inside, and he never had, well, he had a pair of shoes on, but there was nothing left of them. And he looked at Dan and he said, Mister, he said, haven't got a pair of shoes to give me out yet. Guess what Dan did? Took the shoes off of his foot, feet and gave it to. Right? Now that's a true good fellow. Now with that said, the old news babe, old news buys uh, paper drive, Bruce Tate, are you ready? This year, our paper drive is getting back a little more closer to normal. We're going to be in the streets with masks on, and all the teams want that because they enjoy the, the interaction with the people in the cars, and they enjoy dodging the cars as well, but that's another story. It's great to be back. You know, 111 years. Just think about it. What other organization is in existence for 111 years? I used to pick up the phone and I hear the person say, I want to donate $2,000. And I said, why? Because during such such a time, I remember I was 12 years old, the good fellows came to our house and brought food and you don't know what it meant to us. And now I'm in a position to be able to give back. I love it. I guard it. But unfortunately, COVID comes along. So, good fellas, are you going to be open during this time of pandemic? The answer was yes. To survive and, the, and, and with lockdown and so forth, you limited how many bodies could be in the room. So they formed a bubble because the Board of Health said, if you don't follow the rules, we can close you down. We don't have one good fellow of the year. I'm going to present to you 15 good fellows of the year. Joe Batmeyer, Brian Bowman, Madeline Chase, Jim Calvert, Rich De Hayes, Roger Dion, Dan Dan. Ken McGuire, Elsier Noel, Brenda Knowles, Tom Ray, Art Reed, Bruce Tate. We that as mentioned, unfortunately cannot be here. And Trevor Thomas. And let's all stand and give him an applause. Good evening. 
have been blessed to be a part of this organization for the past several years. In my family, service to the community has always been very important. That is your privilege to serve others. As the incoming president, I have extremely big shoes to fill. And there's a few women uh, that I think need to be mentioned who have been here long before I. From I think the very first woman, uh, Minnie Boomer, uh, Elzora Chase, the late Colleen Reno, Madeline Chase, Barb Herbertson, and so many others. These women have not made a difference because they're women. They have made a difference because they care. And at the end of my term, I hope that it is not my gender that you remember, but is my dedication to serving others. Thank you. the grave marker of Mary Amelia Boomer. Very hard to read. Mary A. Boomer. She's wife of William. It's just amazing. It's amazing they found it. You can barely read her name. Um, so I'm going to try to see if I can get a, an imprint on it. There's the M starting. Incredible. And the A for her middle name, Amelia. B O O M. Finding her grave is like a, is like a, it's almost emotional for me. It's, it allows us to have a, a physical connection to her right here. And, and it's, it's just amazing that, that it's here for us to see and feel and touch. She's such a big part of Windsor's history that people don't even know about. And that's really, that's tragic. But, but we're going to fix that in, in the uh, official history of the Windsor Goodfellows. Without Mary Boomer, I don't think that, that Goodfellows would have lasted or would have taken off as it did. So to know that, well, this is where she is, it's, it's just, it's really incredible. to go play in traffic. Got to do what we got to do. Gotta shake my butt out on the corner to make some money. Let's do it. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Thank you. Here's our retired chief out here too, selling papers. When retired, he doesn't even have to do it anymore, but he's still out. So it's kind of cool, on one corner you've got our retired fire chief and then on this corner we've got one of our brand new recruits who just started there a few weeks ago. So it's kind of cool to see uh, you know, the new people continuing the tradition and stepping up. That's what it's all about. Come on Carl, show a little leg! <laughs> I love being out here doing this. Interact with the people, you get a lot of people that thank you. Hi there, Merry Christmas, thank you. That speaks volumes to eh, about the kind of people you have helping is Roger sends me the text saying, uh, you know, he'll be there Thursday, but unfortunately he won't be able to make it Friday because he has his cancer treatment. I was, and he apologized. He actually apologized for not being out there helping. No reason to apologize when you're going to your cancer treatment. Unreal. Not so much fun in the rain when you get wet, but, but like I say, usually when we have crappy weather, people usually give more. Hi there. Good. Right in the bowl there. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Merry Christmas to you. How you doing, Rod? Good. How yeah, you we're guys doing? doing? Thanks for coming out. Nice to be back out on the I street. know. Isn't it nice? Yeah, it's very nice. That's awesome. Hi there. Anything helps, son. Right in the hole. Right there. Right in the hole. Merry Christmas. Thank you. This is when he likes to eyeball everybody. If there's no newspaper on their dash, you always eyeball them. <laughs> You can see him checking his pockets and it's kind of funny. Why, thank you. Merry Christmas, thanks guys. Thank you for your support. 
See, it works. <laughs> this is what it's all yeah. about being able to interact with the people as, they're, as they pull up and open the window, and it's a, it's a feel good thing to do. Whether it's raining, snowing, whatever, it's, it's all part of it. And when you think back, this is, that's how it started, like 106 years ago or whatever. Standing on the streets and selling papers, so everybody's excited to be back.